other information if you want but we are going to use these so let's now check if money has been transferred from the customer email or the customer account to the owner uh, account and in order to check for that you need to go to developer.paypal.com and log in with your actual email business email uh, or business account email and then click on accounts in the sandbox because we are we tested the uh, sandbox click on accounts and and you are going to see here the owner account as well as the customer account if we click on the testing or the customer uh, email uh, and then profile you are going to see this click on funding and scroll down and you are going to see that the initial uh, amount was ten thousand dollars remember when we initialized this account with ten thousand dollars now the balance is nine thousand eight hundred forty seven point eighty five uh, dollars US dollars because we have bought some products from uh, by using this account so money has been transferred from this account to the uh, account of the um, owner of the store so let's now check click on clause and let's check the owner the uh, the store owner account if uh, email if I click on profile I am going to see the um, here some uh, options I'm gonna click on funding and scroll down and as you can see that the balance was initially zero but now uh, it's 61.88 because the uh, customer some customer which was the Laravel uh, testing at example.com has paid me uh, 61.88 uh, dollars for products that I, uh, I uh, I display on my uh, website or my e-commerce store you can also use the notifications here if I click on notifications it's gonna give me the uh, notification um, of what happened in my account did I receive some uh, money or did I uh, pay for some services or products and since money has been transferred from the uh, from the testing or the personal to the business account it means that our payment system is is working in order to store the payment information after the user or customer pays for the products we need to have the order ID along with other uh, information because the order ID will work as a foreign key so it's very important in order to know exactly what products the user has uh, purchased and uh, it's very also important to know information if you want to get more information about a specific user or uh, make uh, statistical analysis in your store it's very important to have that order ID with the payment information so here I'm gonna also add the order ID with the payment info uh, session and later we are going to store all of this in a separate table for payments so here what I'm gonna do is that I am going to use the payment info uh, variable and uh, or array and I'm gonna create a new key called order ID and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna store the order ID that we have created which is this one here order ID so now we have the order ID stored in the uh, payment information uh, array and it's also going to be stored in the session so that we can access it later in other functions in the controllers so after the customer pays for the product we want to take them from this payment page to a receipt page or any other page maybe the main page or any other page that you want them to see but we cannot leave them here because this is not right 
because we they might think that they did not pay and click again and we don't want that to happen we want to make sure that they know that payment has been done and they should uh, be waiting for their products to arrive to their home so what I'm gonna do is that I am going to display a page uh, a receipt page to show them uh, details about uh, about their payment as well as uh, maybe the delivery time so in order to accomplish that what we need to do is that we need to create just a root and a function as well as a view to display these data so the first step that I am going to do is that I'm gonna get up to our resources views and then the payment folder and I am going to create a uh, payment view called payment receipt dot blade dot php and this is going to uh, be displayed for the user and we are going to display these data these relevant data for uh, their payment so this is the first step this, the second step is just creating a root let's create a root in our web.php so this is our uh, web.php file and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna just paste the URL uh, or the root that I have created previously and this root is going to process payment actually it's not exactly going to process payment because payment uh, has already been processed by PayPal what's gonna do is that it is going to change the payment status from on hold or not paid to already paid and as you can see here it's a get request and then payment and then uh, slash payment receipt and then slash payment ID slash payer ID and these we are gonna get from uh, PayPal so these are going to be stored in a table that we are going to create later which is called payments uh, table and I'm gonna create that table later and then um, I'm gonna use the fold the payment folder and inside it I'm gonna use the payments control controller and the function that I'm gonna use also is called show payment receipt so it's, it's a different function a new function and I'm gonna give this root a name of show payment receipt so this is the second step creating a root for our view the third step is going to be working on this function show payment receipt so after creating the payment receipt root it's time to use it but where exactly should we use it well the answer is that it should be used inside the success state of the unauthorized function that was given by PayPal because it indicates that payment has been successfully processed so let me now get to this function which is located inside the payment page dot blade dot PHP so this function the unauthorized and once it returns the uh, this alert thank you for your purchase instead of adding this console.log I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna paste this line of code which is just a JavaScript code that will direct the user to this URL which is payment receipt slash and then we append the payment ID and then we also append the um, payer ID but here you need to be very careful you need to add this dot which indicates that we know we need to use the same directory because we told our root that this payment receipt will be located inside a folder called payment and then slash payment receipt so you need to add this dot so that you tell JavaScript that you are using the same directory otherwise it could get you to a, a wrong location and you will never get to your uh, payment receipt page another way is using the URL function so I'm gonna paste it here as you can see you would just use the URL function but you would have to type the name of the folder the previous folder which is payment instead of the dot and then you just uh, you just pass the data dot payment ID and the data dot payer ID and you need also to be careful here with the structure of this string so that you don't get any errors so now you have two options either you can use the first choice or this one so I'm gonna use the first one
So the next step is creating the function that is going to be called once the user gets directed to this URL. So I'm going to get to the web.php. So the next step is creating this show payment receipt function, which I'm going to create inside the payments controller. So here inside payments controller.php, I'm going to create the function that is going to um, process payment and change the payment status from not paid or on hold to already paid or paid. And this function is going to also store information into payment, information into the payments table that I'm going to create later. And finally, it's going to redirect the user to the payment receipt page. So I'm going to create this function. I already created it, so I'm going to paste it here. And as you can see, it's called show payment receipt. And it's going to take two parameters, the, pay, the PayPal payment ID, as well as the PayPal payer ID. And these two were passed with the uh, root that we created previously. And as I told you, this function is going to handle the store of this data. But it's, gonna, it's not going to do that by itself. It's going to call a private function that I'm going to create here. And then it's going to redirect the user to the uh, payment receipt page. So I'm going to divide the process into two steps. The first one is a function, a private function that will uh, process payment and validate may a payment to make sure that money or the transaction was created by PayPal and we are not scammed by uh, some customers or some uh, users. So the first function is called validate payment. And by the way, I have created this function before, so I'm going to just paste it here. And as you can see, this function will take the payment, uh, the PayPal payment ID, as well as the PayPal payer ID. And the most important part is the, the, the most important parameter is the PayPal payment ID, because this one, uh, the one that I'm going to use here, the PayPal payer ID might be used if you want to develop this function further. And what this function is going to do is that it is going to call PayPal um, API to get, first of all, to get the uh, payment or the access token. And then using the access token, you will use as you will use the payment, the PayPal payment ID as well to uh, call uh, PayPal API to make sure that payment or the transaction has been approved. And this function, as you can see at the end, will return a JSON uh, a JSON code that contains if the transaction was approved or not. And by the way, this function might not work on your uh, local server. You might have to uh, have a, a paid server. You need to have a paid uh, server in order to make calls from your uh, site. So if you are using a local host, it might not work. And by the way, here you need to replace this uh, this um, client ID with the one that will be provided by PayPal. You just need to uh, log into your developer.paypal.com and as I uh, showed you before in previous tutorials how to get the client ID as well as your secret, you need to paste them here instead of these uh, texts. And uh, also when you go live, you need to replace this URL this part, this uh, PayPal URL with the uh, PayPal.com without the sandbox. And finally, you need to change the uh, the uh, PayPal environment from sandbox to production if you want to go live. 